This is the last uh, uh, session of the conference, so thank you for everyone uh, participating to this point. As you can tell, I am a not a Tissin Matthews. Uh, Tissin has actually, um, unfortunately, he caught the flu and he missed his flight this morning. And because I was working with Tissin very closely in um, the, the deployment of generative AI, as well as I'm actually very passionate about elderly care from previous startup work that I've done, um, I had the honor to be able to give this talk today. So SkyPoint, to give you a little bit of context about SkyPoint, they're an AI platform that helps the senior care industry. And what they basically try to do is give access to information around elderly care, um, and it's primarily geared towards nurses, doctors, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> now the question is, why is this so important? Like, how exciting could elderly care be? Well, the number of individuals that need elderly care is going to be doubling by 2030. The budget is $1 trillion a year in the United States alone. Just for some context, the entire US defense budget is $800 million. So what's going to happen when we have double the number of, um, uh, of elderly in the United States? Is our budget going to go up by 2x to, to $2 trillion? No. We're going to have elderly being put out on the street. It's, they're going to be very, there's going to be a lot of poverty, a lot of pain. The good news is, in the elderly care industry, 70% of the costs is actually on administration. It's not on care. <laughs> and I know you're all shaking your heads. What do you mean by administration? Well, things like figuring out how to do my insurance payments, things like scheduling new um, nurses to come to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to, to take care of the elderly, uh, all those kind of things. There's about 70% of waste that really IT should be able to get rid of. And generative AI is extremely important because when I actually tried to tackle this problem when I was trying to a startup company through mobile apps, it turns out nobody wants to do that. It turns out that nurses, elderly, children of the elderly, et cetera, they all communicate via text. It's all actually human, human interaction. So the only chance that one actually has to get rid of a lot of these costs in elderly care is around generative AI, in my opinion. So that's why it's, this is so important from a societal standpoint. This is probably the most, I think probably it, there's a nuclear war, a climate change, and then the, uh, the secondary effects due to the population inversion. So this is probably, probably in my opinion, the most impactful ver way to use generative AI. And so what SkyPoint AI does is an end-to-end -end life cycle for your, da your data. So all the data, they, give, they basically have a big database of all the different uh, data related to um, healthcare. Uh, it's a lake house at the core. And then the co-pilot, the AI co-pilot, allows you to chat with your data. And um, one of the things that they've been working on, that uh, SkyPoint has been working on, is creating Microsoft chat uh, co-pilots. So these are co-pilots that are on top of your AI-ready data. They leverage a combination of, uh, they leverage a lot of the, um, they try to unify all the data. It's very industry specific. And they do actually something called a, a lot of fine tuning of the AI models. So that with Arla, HF, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, from an architecture standpoint, uh, SkyPoint leverages a combination of structured data primarily in uh, Databricks uh, on top of Azure. Uh, and then they also leverage unstructured data that is stored in vector databases in Azure DB. To give a little bit more uh, context to this, it, for example, in the case where they're uh, querying structured data, they would take the data and then they would leverage a process called self-reflection. So the LLM would take the data and then start saying, OK, what do I do? Uh, I need to answer this question. So let's look at the different 
over time. Um, uh, let, let's look at the different uh, tables there. So there's actually underneath the hood, it makes an API call uh, via the tools uh, API within Langchain to the Unity catalog. This is the Databricks Unity catalog to collect information about what tables there are. And it would identify, the LLM would be smart enough to identify which particular columns to use from which tables. Then there's a process, once we have collected the right schemas, the, the right tables that the data is from, uh, then there's a process of generating the SQL statement. Uh, and then they would um, leverage uh, previous examples called few shot prompting in order to generate the SQL statement. So in this case, the, the LLM realizes it needs to join the employee attendance uh, and group by role. Oh, so underneath the hood, the, this kind of method, there's, it's, there's a method called react. This is called, re, this is a reasoning action. It's a paper published by Google in 2020. And this is very similar to, if you guys were in my previous talk, the, the action perception loop. So react stands for reasoning action. And in order to generate the SQL statement, they do a couple of things. Um, they have the, the they pull in the data model into uh, when they when they do the prompting uh, they pull in the data model. They use few sh dynamic few shotting. So this is the creating the natural language of SQL statements, and this is particularly useful when you're trying to do jo joins and group buys. They do metadata annotation. So what happens is that in the Unity catalog where they have all the table schemas, they're able to uh, provide extra information such as what does this table mean? What do these columns mean? How are the column information related to each other? <laughs> then they use something called uh, structural decomposition. So this is the idea of splitting up a question into multiple questions. And then the last but not least is something called self-reflection. So self-reflection is a technique to see if the generated SQL statement answers the original question that was being asked. And underneath the hood, there's also a whole bunch of enterprise features, namely they've implemented RBAC and observability, uh, RBAC access control, and then observability to make sure that these things are, um, the answers are being uh, surfaced right. So diving a little bit more into the SQL agent, this is a, this is a uh, Langchain uh, particular feature. Um, the few shotting, so for example, if there's a question, say, what is the average rating of a community Morris house? It's able to figure out what is the right columns, uh, leveraging the metadata to, uh, to, uh, uh, to identify the right columns, and then generating this average, it's able to generate this particular statement. Uh, as I just talked about, self-reflection is able to allow you to see if the end uh, query matches the original uh, question that's being asked. So what about structured data? <clears throat> so stru structured data, what they do, uh, what that does underneath the hood is that, let's take a look at this question. What is the leave policy for new hires? One of the methods that they use is this called multi-query uh, multi generation. So we would take one particular question and decompose into multiple questions. So for example, what is the lead policy for new hires? Then it could be broken down to what is the new policy for new hires? So actually, that's just uh, the original question. What is the lead policy for new joiners, which is similar to new hires, right? But it's just an extra question. And then what is the absentee policy for new hires? So it generates three questions at one time and then calls one or more vector uh, database tables. And then after it gets back the response from three questions, uh, three questions in a row, the LLM is able to summarize the answers for all three. Uh, so RAG is being done on top of PDFs, text documents, et cetera. Uh, they lot, leverage a lot of document annotation. And one of the things they do is actually they use a lot of fine tuning. So, um, once you have enough history uh, built up of making these kinds of queries and they look at the thumbs up, thumbs down, 
they would be able to figure out what kind of data they can use to fine tune the models, such as the, uh, the, the, the open AI uh, models. Uh, then there's also this idea of contextual compression of algorithms. And what this is, is really leveraging like uh, fine tuning again to skip some of the steps that uh, because these are multiple steps, they can use fine tuning to actually just skip some of the steps. Another way that you can use fine tuning to skip steps is that, let's say for example, in this case, <clears throat> um, uh, in this case, there might be a step of having to go out to the database to fetch the catalog of all the, of the, all the schemas. One can actually take all the catalog of the schemas, fine tune the LLM, so the LLM already knows what schemas there are in the database. So you can skip the step of having to go out to the database to grab a schema. So there's a lot of like nifty tricks that one can do to really cut down on the latency. All right. And then the last point is the combo prompts. So this is allows you, so the, the, the most powerful ones are something like this. Like this is a fairly complicated query. It's asking you to do a lot of different things. And they leverage underneath, in order to um, uh, construct this query, the answer for this query, it needs to be broken down into both structured and unstructured data. And so one of the very big concepts in, in, in uh, retrieval augmentation is the idea of doing planning. So they're planning, they're, they're, they're doing a plan and they want to make the plan be able to be parallelized so that they might be able to fetch data from multiple places all at once. And there's different access patterns that are kind of, uh, there's a different ways to actually uh, get the data. One is you do unstructured RAG with structured querying. Uh, when I say structured querying, it just means you're asking a structured question to the LLM. You could do unstructured RAG, uh, sorry, so this is supposed to be unstructured RAG and structured RAG. Structured querying plus structured querying plus structured querying plus unstructured RAG. So there's many different combinations of the ways that you can actually um, you collect your data. And so, for example, this particular use case, they decompose it into these several questions, uh, sorry, this, these several plans in order to fetch all the data at once. And I think this is probably the ultimate in terms of being doing Q&A because you're leveraging the combination of the data that's, in, uh, that's structured as well as unstructured. And I think this is very exciting for Cassandra because majority of the data that's being stored in Cassandra these days is structured data. So uh, the uh, end conclusion is that SkyPoint, it incorporates multiple pillars into enterprise AI. Those pillars are accuracy, configurability, reliability, governance, security, and observability. Uh, so that's a, that's a good example of a production uh, AI system that leverages fairly sophisticated uh, generative AI uh, and uh, advanced RAG techniques. Thank you. A any questions? How long has it been in production? Uh, it's been in production since uh, June, end of June. Yeah, end of June. Uh, yeah, they've been able to, to, to measure benefit. The question was, are they able to measure benefits? And, and the answer is yes. Uh, their early customers are finding massive time savings through this. Uh, in fact, it's, it's, it's shocking how much time they're saving. And I think that's, a, that's another point is that, you know, um, when, if, you're, if, you're saving, if you are doing saving of time to the bottom line, of employees who are fairly high cost, like nurses, you know, they start at 50 bucks an hour, right? And if you can uh, save one hour of nurse time just by providing these kind of generative AI apps, you can start charging based on a certain percentage of what the nurse's salary per hour is. So I think this is kind of from a business standpoint, uh, very different than let's say the other technologies like mobile or business reporting. Any other questions? Yeah, so um, in, in, in terms of um, you know, the messy middle, there's always the messy middle of like, this is 
challenges, here's the, the end to this interview. What do you think the, the messiest uh, part was in kind of coming up with this and making it uh, make this effort? Uh, I think the, the hardest part that they dealt with was hallucinations. Um, and they, they basically, like, uh, so, so Skypoint, they threw everything at it. Every single technique possible, they've tried it out. Uh, and, and so they, it, it, there was a lot of experimentation. Um, the area that I think they have the most opportunity, the most opportunity is this combining structured data and unstructured data. Uh, I think that's the kind of the holy grail. It's something that they're still working on, uh, but if, some, if somebody can crack this, uh, that'd be very, very powerful. The other part that was really hard was to get under the uh, five-second SLA. So a lot of these techniques are multi-step problems, right? So for example, taking this one query and turning it into three queries. Previously, what they did was they took this one query and they used a technique called FLARE, uh, this is forward active retrieval generation. And what the FLARE algorithm does is that it, it does this, it does RAG, but it looks at the, the probability of the tokens being generated from the LLM. And if the probability is low, it would cause the system to try to re-ask another question. So meaning that you can use the LLM to actually figure out if, if it's unsure about itself. Now, that sounds great in theory, but what happened was they found that there was too many round trip uh, costs and that instead it's better to take one single query, turn it into multiple queries, and then do parallelization at one time, which is actually why they moved off of a zero cognitive search onto Cassandra is because they want to have a lot of this parallelization capability. So it's, 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 it's balancing that it's actually was the hardest thing for them to do. Any other questions? Um, so in, let's say, the, the platforms, I mean, different companies use their platforms. Um, how many data sources, different data sources are we talking about to be able to sort of know which one to go to? I, I must have probably missed that part. But. Yeah, actually, I don't know. Uh, but I looked at their schema, and they had hundreds of tables. <laughs> I looked at their Databricks schema, and it was hundreds of tables. It was like a massive uh, ER diagram that looked too small on the screen in Zoom. So it's a lot. And I, actually, that's a the, the, the point, too, is that uh, one of the things that was fairly surprising was they did add a little bit of annotations to their tables, but they managed to get high enough uh, results, uh, just even without annotations, they manage to get high enough um, accuracy on the results. So they're, depending on the customer base, they get between 85 and 95% accurate results, like thumbs up, thumbs down. Any other questions? All right, let's then have drinks. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>